are those promises going to appease the critics and the naysayers via Skype into Newsday? We're now joined by Equal Education's Amanda Rinquest. Amanda Rinquest, good afternoon to you and welcome. So do you take any comfort this afternoon from the promises that the minister has made? Good afternoon, Jeremy, and thank you for having me on your show. Uh, at Equal Education, we do not take comfort in the minister's words and the minister's audit. Um, this audit that she's going to have ready for the president in three months or that the president has requested in three months should have existed already and according to her, her communication with us has, does exist already. That there's the NEMS report which has already given the minister the exact amount of schools with pit latrines and now we're going to start this process again. But most concerning is the, is the minister's word deviate. So when she says we are going to have to deviate from our plans and we're going to work with Treasury and that, that is concerning. The President is not, um, and the Minister is not saying there's going to be extra or additional funds going into solving the toilet sanitation crisis. She's saying we're going to deviate from existing CD allocations. Now CD is meant to be dealing with emergency schools, so we're going to be taking money away from other schools and giving it to sanitation while not dealing with both of these issues at the same time. But isn't the pit latrine crisis at the moment, and it is exactly that, given the loss of two lives and others prior to that, should that not be taking absolute budget priority at this point? Of course it should. The death of, of, of a learner and the fact that sanitation is in such a crisis m means it must be dealt with immediately. But at the same time, there are also schools where rules are collapsing on learners. There are schools where learners are falling into the, wall, into the floors of schools and twisting their ankles and hurting themselves. And there are other, other infrastructural crises outside of sanitation. And the point is, is that this should have been dealt with in 2016. And the minister is saying now 2019 is our new goalpost. And at the same time, saying we're going to take, we're not giving any extra funding to make this happen. Now, I understand what you're saying about sanitation being the immediate crisis, and it is, and we must deal with the sanitation crisis immediately. But if National Treasury is going to work with the department, then National Treasury needs to give more money. You can't, you can't uh, uh, steal from the night to give to the day. Um, we, we need to make sure that we're dealing with all unsafe structures that pose an immediate threat to learners' lives, whether it be in the classroom or in, in, in the toilet. Ms. Rinquist, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm sure that Equal Education then has done its sums as far as this is concerned. If you're going to eradicate this problem entirely, how much money are we talking about? Um, I do not have the exact exact figure with me. I know that there was that there was a costed budget that department that MECs presented to the department and National Treasury didn't give them that amount. Each province said this is exactly how much we need to eradicate infrastructure, and they were given a significantly uh, less amount. So we are mindful of the budgetary constraints that MECs and department and provincial departments have been given, but have been given. But we must also then say that provincial departments such as the Eastern Cape returned half a billion to National Treasury in 2016, the year that the, that the sanitation crisis was meant to be resolved in terms of the norms and standards for school infrastructure. I, I, See, so all of these plans that the minister, all of these plans that the minister talks about, that is going to happen and going to be implemented in the next three months and by 2019, all of this is in the minister's plans to be fixed by 2016. So they are within, they were in the norms and standards and in the provincial plans that, that provinces had to give. And so this is actually us delaying something for three more years that was that should have been costed and implemented three years ago. Maybe I'm just being very obdurate here, but surely what we need at this point, again, given the pit latrine problem that we are facing, is for a separation of that budget from a broader infrastructure budget in order to work out how to fix the schools where this is a problem right now. And once that is done, the next phase of the process surely is looking at broader infrastructural issues. So what concerns me is no one seems to have the figure which that it would take just to fit to to to, to eradicate uh, the pit latrines themselves surely that is a priority it is a priority it is a priority and and i hear what you're saying about there's been a, a crisis and there needing to be a separate amount of money and i agree with you i agree with you that the budget needs to be separated but we can't take away from other immediate infrastructural crises also um and so the concern is then that learners like 
from Hukil Etsuete, for example, where their roof is collapsing on learners in Kes Kamahuk, are not going to get their, 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 their infrastructural crisis made. So I just think that the department is, is wasting money on developing a whole new audit because remember, the, the, the president isn't asking for a plan, he's asking for an audit in three months. And so now we're going to go back and audit, which is expensive, even though the numbers exist and the minister know, we should have had this audit done and uh, has told us she has the numbers. So now we're going to go through this process again and again, and this is also going to cost a lot of money. That's my one concern. But I do, I do think that it would be good to know the cost of the plan for how much the sanitation crisis is going to to cost so that we can begin to track that money and track the spending. When you put pressure, as no doubt you have, on the Department of Basic Education, asking why they have not acted on a previous audit that you suggest has been done already, what do they tell you? Well, so this is the, the one concern. So firstly, the minister said to us from her audit, um, and just generally that, the Limpopo province was norms compliant, which means it had the 1 is to 30 toilets that were not pit latrines. It has no mud, wooden asbestos schools. But today the minister said that there are more than 2,500 pit latrine toilets in Limpopo. So the one is that they're not giving us clear answers. When we say to them that, that this question of, um, of this plan should have happened long ago, uh, we just keep hearing this narrative of the ministers doing the best that they can, they can and no one talks about what the department is doing and the department has made massive inroads. The department has made massive inroads and equal education has acknowledged that, but at the same time, Elena has died. Elena has died, she's fallen through a pit latrine toilet, a pit latrine toilet that should have been eradicated by 2016. So we keep hearing this, this narrative from the minister whenever we put pressure, but no one is taking account of all the things that we have done. And that's not the point. The point is not for you to, for us to go into a long discussion of all the great things the department has done. The point is for us to say, this remains, and how are we going to deal with it now? And so the minister's answer to that is, well, we're going to give the president an uh, audit by the 7th, and then we're going to give him a costed plan. Why does this costed plan not exist, especially when the law, the minimum norms and standards for school infrastructure, requires that there should have been this costed plan by 2014 already? Just a final question, and uh, Ms. Rinkwester, a brief answer if you don't mind. Um, the minister also saying that there will, and I quote, be an inquiry, an inquiry to institute an investigation, an inquiry to institute an investigation into uh, Lumkum Ketwa. Uh, she says no one will support a murderer. Are, are you not concerned that that inquiry into the investigation is coming too late? <sighs> It's, 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 it's definitely coming too late. I mean, we should let the police do the work that the police is meant to do. But this inquiry into unsafe schools and unsafe sanitation should have happened after Michael Kumatwe died in 2014. So this, is a, this, this, this idea of an, an inquiry into, into an investigation seems like it's going to be a prolonged process where, where no one is going to take accountability and no one's head is going to roll and no one in the, in the end it's going to be called just a, a, a sad accident. Is that what it's going to be called, like the death of Michael Kumape was? When in fact, people must take responsibility, including the MEC, the Premier, who the MEC accounts to, the Minister, and her DG. All right, uh, we are going to leave it there from Equal Education via Skype. Uh, Amanda Rinquist, thank you very much.